Hello, this is the story of the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there was a mother pig who had three little pigs. The oldest pig said to his mother, please bake me a cake and put it in my lunch basket for I am going out into the world to seek my fortune. So his mother baked him a cake and he started off down the road. He had not gone far when he met a man with a wagon full of straw. The little pig asked the man if he might have just one bundle. When the man gave it to him, he built himself a neat little house. The very next morning, the wolf came out of the woods. When he reached the door of the little pig's house, he knocked and called, little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf said gruffly, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. He huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in. But the straw got in his nose and made him sneeze. And he was so out of breath from huffing and puffing that he could hardly run at all. And by taking the shortest way, the little pig got safely back to his mother. You are not big enough to go out into the world to seek your fortune, said the mother pig. You will have to wait a little longer. So the little pig stayed at home. The next morning, the second little pig said to his mother, please bake me a cake and put it in my lunch basket for I am going out into the world to seek my fortune. So his mother baked him a cake and he started off down the road. He had not gone far when he met a man with a wagon load of sod. He asked if he might have some. When the man gave him some, he built himself a neat little house. The very next morning, the wolf came out of the woods. When he reached the door of the little pig's house, he knocked and called, little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf said gruffly, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. He huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in. But the sod came tumbling down on his head until he was nearly buried. He was so out of breath that he could hardly run at all. And by taking the shortest way home, the little pig got back to his mother. You are not yet big enough to go out into the world to seek your fortune, said the mother pig. You will have to wait a little longer. So the little pig stayed home. The next morning, the youngest of the little pigs said to his mother, it is time I went out into the world to seek my fortune. And with a cake in his lunch basket and the basket over his arm, off he started. He had not gone far when he met a man with a wagon load of bricks. He asked if he might have some. When the man gave them to him, he built himself a little house, both snug and strong. The very next day, the wolf came to the little pig's house and called, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf said gruffly, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. He huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he couldn't blow the house in. He had to think of another way to catch the little pig. I know where we can get some turnips, the wolf tried hard not to growl. And where is that? asked the little pig. The best in the countryside grow in Mr. Smith's home field. Would you like to go with me? At what time are you going? At six o'clock, I will meet you there. But the next morning, the little pig got up at five and when, an hour later, the wolf knocked at his door and said, are you ready? The little pig answered, ready? Why, I've already been there and back and my turnips are almost cooked for dinner. Now, the wolf was very angry because he had lost his chance to catch the little pig. 
but he said in his softest voice, I know where the ripest red apples grow. Let us go tomorrow and get some for dinner. Is it far away? asked the little pig. Only over the valley to Farmer Brown's orchard. Be ready and I will meet you there at five. And don't you try any more of your tricks on me. The little pig got up at four, but it was farther than he had expected. And then too, he had to climb the tree to get the apples. While he was up in its branches, he saw the wolf. He was so frightened, he nearly fell to the ground, but he called out, I'll shake some down to you. Instead, he threw the apples as far as he could. And while the wolf went to get them, the little pig ran home. The wolf was angrier than ever, but he stopped at the little pig's house and said, tomorrow, there is a fair at Wickham on the hill. If you want to go, meet me there at three o'clock. The next day, the pig started earlier than he had before. When he got to the fair, he bought himself a large butter churn. And on the way home, he saw the wolf running toward him. He was so frightened, he jumped into the churn. The churn rolled down the hill. Somebody thump, somebody thump. When the wolf saw it coming, he put his tail between his legs and ran, howling for help. He thought a terrible monster was after him. He ran straight to the little pig's house and told him how some frightful creature had chased him all the way down from Wickham on the hill. Ha, said the little pig, that was I in my churn that I bought at the fair. It was I who scared you, ha. Now, the wolf had never been so angry in all his life. He made up his mind he would get the little pig this time. So he climbed up on the roof, intending to slide down the chimney and catch the little pig in his own house. The little pig heard strange sounds on the roof and he knew at once what the wolf was up to. He ran to fill his great iron kettle with water and build a hot fire under it. The wolf slid down the chimney and fell in with a mighty splash. The little pig hurried to put the lid on and he cooked the wolf well. That night, his mother and his two brothers came to dinner. His mother brought a raisin pudding and some fresh baked bread. The little pig had churned new butter in his churn but the greatest treat was the wolf. Boiled until he was tender and roasted until he was brown, stuffed with apples and served with turnips and gravy. They had a fine dinner, dinner and what's more, they lived happily all the rest of their days. And that is the story of the three little pigs as you've probably never heard it before. Remember, Grandma loves you.